never have strawberries. One thing I really enjoy about this car, it's got a lot of cup holders for a sports car, like compared to all the other cars I've had. And they're also in good locations. Um, almost always, they're like right behind the shifter and it makes it a pain in the butt when you're trying to drive. But this car's got them like back, way back here where your arm won't hit them and uh, there's one like right up on the dash, which makes it convenient. Okay, I ended up finding a transmission for the 350. Um, supposedly it's good, so hopefully whenever we put it in, it's okay. Um, unfortunately, it's not the CD09, it's just the same transmission I have now. Um, which, as long as it's good, I don't, I don't care that much. I probably won't have the car long enough to, to have to worry about the gears going out again, or the synchros going out again. Um, but I got it from this JDM junkyard, is what you'd call it, I guess. Let's say the 370, uh, some Evos, a Supra, a ton of S2000. So it was kind of cool. The The people there were really chill too, so that was cool. Um, but I fit it in the back of the 350. Um, no spare tire or anything back there with it. But So uh, I'm just now gonna start the trip back home. Um, it was almost two hours to get here. At least we found one and we've got it now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my drive home. All right, I'm finally getting around to doing the install for the new transmission to fix the third and fourth gear synchro grind. Um, it was a bit of a process to get this car in the air, unfortunately, because it was low and then it was pushing my uh, the ramps that I have. But uh, I got it in the air. We're gonna start by removing the Y pipe and probably disconnecting some sensors and stuff. Um, down there and then the shifter as well. I ended up putting this project off until after I got my uh, new camera, which is what I'm using to film it right now. So the quality is hopefully better, but I don't know how to use it very well yet. So, could be worse, who knows. Now I'm gonna take out the uh, O2 sensors. They're not in the way of the taking out the Y pipes, but the wiring harness for them is on the transmission, so they'll have to come off. Um, I wouldn't actually have to unscrew them from the exhaust, but I wanna take the spacers off anyways, because that, just to see if that helps with the uh, idle misfire at all. The Y pipe is out. I'm just gonna move it over here for now. Next will pro probably be sensors and stuff, and then I think there's also a cross member um, that'll have to be taken out too, so I can get the drive shaft down. Um, but right now, it's basically just small stuff like that, um, so that the transmission's free, so that way we can unbolt it from the engine. Do you know how to take off the shift knob? Uh, twist it. Yeah. Twist it to left? Yeah. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Yup. I see the screw thing. Should I? Yeah. I need you to take it off. No, you don't have to twist the screw things. Just twist the ball. Other way. Yep, that left. That's the 
Got it? Oh, that's a lefty Lucy. Oh. oh. It's heavy. Yeah, way to shift now, baby. It's quicker shifting. Okay, and. Okay, I need to take the trim piece off now. Just yank it and pull. Yeah. Nope, not that. Uh, grab like the the chrome part around the shift boot. Just grab it. Yeah. Like you can div dig your fingers into the shift boot if you need to, and it'll pop off. The whole pla black piece will. Just pull hard. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Not too hard. <laughs> Did I do it? Yeah, that should be good. Um, <laughs> try and like get it off that shifter part for a little, like that shift, the lever. Try and get it up over that and then twist it. But there's wires on those dials that you can't rip. Oh yeah, just make sure it's off the, the lever. There you go, that's fine. Yeah. Alright, hopefully you didn't ruin that ribbon cable, dude. That was some Hulk stuff oh, right said, Dude, said, that was Hulk right you there. You said yank it, I yanked it. <laughs> okay, I okay, it. I'm gonna take the drive shaft off. So, see that lever there? Uh, what one? That lever, yeah. I'm gonna need you to put that up and down for me as I spin the drive shaft to get the bolts off. Okay. All right, can you do that? Yep. Okay, just hold tight until I tell you what to do. All right, it's it's up right now, right? Uh, yep. Okay, cool. Just leave it there for now. All right, go ahead and put that handle down. Okay, pull it up. Is it up? Yep. Sweet. Pull it up harder. You don't have to push the button in to pull it up. Just yank it. Yep, that was good. Alright, you can put it down now. Rubber mallet would be good. Too bad I broke it. You broke it? Yeah. Is that bad? I got the uh, rear part of the drive shaft off just by tapping it with a hammer with a piece of wood in between it and it just came right off. There's just rust and corrosion holding it on. Uh, this piece I believe just pulls it out and I think it's probably gonna make a mess. So I've got towels to hopefully try and cram the hole. Um, these actually have a carbon fiber drive shaft, so I'm also going to try and be careful with it. Yeah, it's coming out. Kind of scared for my camera right now. Huh, no liquid. We're good. Surprising, actually. Alright, um, now all we have left to do is, I think there will probably be some stuff up here. For the shifter, just to disconnect the uh, shifter bracket, um, and then other than that, we've got these two mounts here, and then after that, it's literally just the bolts that hold it to the engine. Um, I already took the slave off; you can see it dangling there. Um, that was just two 12 millimeter bolts that hold the transmission. The new trans didn't come with a slave, and I'm not gonna take that banjo bolt off so I don't have to, uh, just so I don't have to uh, bleed the clutch again. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect some of the shifter stuff up here, which just looks like it's a couple of bolts for the for the rubber boot, so I probably won't record that because that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then I'll have to deal with the front engine bolts before I start doing these mounts here. Say what's up. So uh, last night I ended up calling it before pulling the trans out um, and now I have Matt here this morning to help me pull it out so there's less of a chance of me dropping it on myself. What's happening? Uh, you know, just getting some trans mount bolts off, or no, engine mount bolts off. I think we've only got two more and they're both accessible from the engine bay so I think I'm done under the car for now until we're ready to drop it. Out here. Working on the car. Look at that. Red. That's how you know she scoots. Gonna go on a quick ride in Matt's car. 
um, while we're working on the 350. He's got some new mods I haven't seen yet. So he's going to, uh, let me check him out. And uh, we're gonna take a quick break from the 350 for now. As with all great car projects, a trip to Harbor Freight is necessary. I couldn't get a good enough weld on that bolt because of the location it's in. Um, so now we gotta get a bolt extractor set at Harbor Freight. Found our goods. Just went on a rip. The ST, she scoots. Um, link up here or somewhere. Oh, well, there is? For, for my channel, yeah, there, there's gonna be a link. <laughs> uh, awesome stuff on there, so. If, you, uh, if you're interested in boosty hot hatches, just come my way and I'll uh, show you what's up. All right, I've never had one of these uh, bolt extractor kits before, but I've seen them. Um, and now that I have one, they're awesome. Um, the socket, you can kind of see, maybe. Yeah, there it goes. Um, it like cuts into the threads, or it cuts into the bolt. So the bolt head's like got uh, grooves cut into it now. Um, it actually worked really well. I'm glad I have a kit for these now. It'll come in handy, I'm sure, in the future. But now I just gotta pull off the four mounts that hold the trans to the bottom of the chassis, and then it'll be ready to come off. Um, Matt had to go to work, though, so I'm back to dropping the transmission by myself, which shouldn't be a big deal. I've done it before, but it would've been nice to have some extra hands. All right, so I've got the transmission somewhat strapped to my jack. And got nearly everything off. All right, this is the last bolt and then it should be free. So the transmission should be free to come off and out. I'm pretty sure at least. Yes, I will. <laughs> I was gonna say, does he come hang out with us now? Oh no! No parties though. There's all that trans fluid I thought was gonna come out earlier. Where's it leaking? Okay, I cannot even begin to explain how much trouble I just had getting that out. Um, it was just like one horribly played out thing after the next. Um, it is out. Uh, and I have a massive mess. All of the trans fluid I thought was going to come out earlier didn't. Uh, it came out when I tried to drop it. Um, it's probably dark for the camera to see, but there's literally trans fluid everywhere. Um, and because of coronavirus and everything, no store that carries oil dry or anything is open this late. Um, so I'm gonna have to wait until tomorrow when I can go get oil dry because I'm not gonna be able to clean all that up with just like shop towels or anything. Um, but the jack was strapped down with a ratchet strap. The ratchet strap didn't hold. The jack slid forward and I couldn't move it because there's a strap on it. Uh, the car wasn't tall enough to slide the transmission out of and the jack was strapped to the transmission. Um, it just kept getting wedged in there. It was the worst time I've had pulling a transmission so far. But yeah, so I'm limited because I can't be under there with all that oil tonight. What well, could, I just don't want to be. But I'm limited on what I can do tonight. I'm just going to switch over my shifter bracket from the old one because it has a short throw and shifter and stuff on it that I want to put on the new one. Pretty much be done for the night um, and be back at it again tomorrow. So I was trying to figure out why the trans wouldn't come in all the way. It looks like the trans I got broke off one of the little dowels off the engine it came off of and it's stuck in the trans. So now I think I'm gonna have to pull the trans off again to get that dowel out because it's just hitting the one that's in the engine and is not gonna go on. All right, I didn't film that part of uh, fixing those little dowels, 
Um, that was kind of annoying to deal with. Um, but I did get those fixed. Um, and the transmission is back on um, with, I think, all of the engine to trans mount, uh, engine to trans bolts in. Um, so now it's back to doing uh, the small stuff like the slave cylinder and all the um, uh, sensor connectors. And then we got to fill it with fluid. You're supposed to use Nissan specific fluid. Um, because these transmissions are really picky to what kind of fluid they get. So if you're doing this yourself, make sure you get the, uh, I think it's 75W85. Um, I can't find it anywhere locally, so I have the wrong fluid to put in it today. Um, just so I can use the car until I uh, order in the right fluid. And then I'll change it out again, which I'm sure this transmission needs a flush anyways. So it's not going to be the end of the world, but... But if you're doing it, make sure you get the right fluid for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and keep working on getting the rest of this stuff done. in on its own. I cannot get the sensor plugged in. Bro. Hey. <laughs> Mechanic. Alright, I think I'm ready to put the drive shaft in and then we can fill it with fluid. Oh yeah, I can do this by myself. It's carbon fiber, that means it's light. This thing doesn't weigh anything at all. I'm not struggling one bit. Oh, insert me. I don't even know if there's fluid in here, but I'm just gonna check in case there is so we can empty it before I fill it. Not that it matters, because fluid's only gonna be in here for a little bit anyways, but, oh, there is. Are you kidding me? Oh my god! Jeez. I was on there. Alright, so I didn't film the rest of it, but I was really just putting on the uh, exhaust and I think that's pretty much it. Um, so I'm gonna start it up now. Uh, I'm really hoping it starts. And I'm hoping I didn't forget anything, uh, which is very likely. Um, but we'll see, I guess. I really need to fix that belt quick. But it started. The throwout bearing isn't like making noise at idle. That makes me very happy. I uh, put, I didn't get a new one, but I like I cleaned the one that was in there. I still don't have the front bumper on, the shifter, like cover trim piece, but we'll be fine to drive like this. Um, I'm kind of nervous because they, I mean, I got it from a junkyard. It's a, um, the, that JDM junkyard I was talking about. Um, and they said it was tested and everything, but I saw the Z it came out of and it was wrecked. I mean, and they got it wrecked, so. I don't know if there's like a way they can bench test it or something. So, kind of makes me nervous considering the problem I had is very common for um, is very common for these cars. I didn't do anything with the clutch really.
had an exhaust leak. There was a bracket that didn't have a screw on one side. And then there was like another thing that holds the wires that wasn't bolted down. And I didn't have the uh, rubber boot around the thing that uh, keeps some noise out. So I'm gonna go drive it now with all that fixed to see if there's still any noises or if it's acting weird. So far so good, no noises. And uh, it sounds good. So we're already off to a better start.